Hey, we haven't done an Ask Emily video in a while. Your first question might be, are these completely unnecessary and unfunctional zippers? And the answer to that is yes. And now on to more of your more relevant questions. James Houghton Photo on Instagram asks, what can we look forward to from the scoop in 2018? 2018 so far is shaping up to be a really exciting year for us here at the Brain Scoop. Uh, we are lucky enough to be hitting the road again a couple of times this year, traveling to other research institutions and museums. I can't exactly tell you which ones yet, but I had to renew my passport. So that's something. We're part of a couple of other National Science Foundation grants, which is really good for us. Uh, we hope to do some more live stream dissections in the Granger Science Hub. So if that's something you want to see more of, let me know. We'll be launching our podcast eventually this year. For sure this year, for sure in 2018. I know we said that for all of 2017, but for sure sometime in 2018, we will begin uploading our podcast. Also, 2018 is the Field Museum's 125th year anniversary. So in addition to the Brain Scoop doing a lot of cool, exciting things next year, the Field Museum's also got a lot of uh, exciting updates and announcements. So stay tuned to those in the coming months. Tim L. White on Instagram asked, are you glad to have been able to branch out to all the various things that the Field Museum houses, or are you wistful for animal specimen prep? I am super glad that we've been able to branch out far more than I ever anticipated being at the Field Museum. We've been able to travel to other countries and other continents. We've done field expeditions here in the United States. And more than that, like the diversity of topics we've been able to tackle from invertebrate life and insects to meteorites from outer space and deep time topics like dinosaurs and pre history. Like, it's been a dream come true for me as somebody who is just wants to forever be a lifelong learner. I do really enjoy the specimen prep when we get to do it, but there's so much more to appreciate about the natural world and the natural sciences, and that's been my greatest joy in bringing all this stuff to you. So I hope you've enjoyed it at least a little bit. Patrick Kelly on Instagram asks, what is the single best thing we can do to spark children's interest in natural science? I truly think that the most important and best thing that you can do with kids uh, actually of any age is to take them outside. And it doesn't even matter if you live in a particularly natural environment because there's so much interesting urban ecology all around us at all times. And if you're looking hard enough and you're looking together, it really inspires a lot of interesting questions. Like what is that bird? Or what is that insect? Or why do we plant female ginkgo trees in city urban environments when their fruit actually smells like vomit? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to it, but you can find out together. David at DavidRN85 asks, now that you live in Chicago, what environmental issues do you think are most pressing to the Great Lakes? Some of the more pressing issues uh, facing the Great Lakes are the invasive species, primarily the quagga and the zebra mussels. These mussels are incredibly destructive and they breed like crazy. They spread all over the place. And since they're filter feeders, they filter out a lot of the microorganisms that are in the water, which isn't great because those microorganisms feed the other fishes and the other animals in the environment. The other thing they do as filter feeders is that they increase the water clarity and that sounds really great but it actually just means that more sunlight can penetrate the water which causes these gigantic algae blooms which wash up on the shore and smell like rotting garbage. At one time I was at a party at someone's apartment and they had a very nice view looking over Lake Michigan and I said wow what a view the water is so blue and they're like yeah isn't it beautiful and I said you know why it's so blue and they said no why and so I told them about the water clarity thing and then I felt a little bit bad because they had this great view and I feel like every time they're going to look at it, they're just going to think about it. invasive zebra mussels. My bad. I'm a blast to have at parties, by the way. Tracy Baldwin on Twitter at Tracy Baldwin asks, would you like to take the Brain Scoop to the Smithsonian for a series on their collections? And do you think they'd be amenable to it? Yes. Philip Etherington at Etherington P on Twitter asks, how much responsibility does entertainment media have in regards to getting scientific facts right? I'm still sore that Jurassic World didn't update any of the dino visuals despite decades of changes in the field. I really feel like the answer to this comes down to a personal preference and a lot can be said positively for the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World series and books and movies in terms of their ability to generate a lot of enthusiasm for aspirational generations of future paleontologists. I personally get so much more out of fiction media when they go that extra mile and they hire a scientific consultant or bring scientists on, uh, on their staff to help inform the accuracies and kind of mitigate some of the inaccuracies in the storytelling. But like I said, it comes all down to personal preference and I'd love to know what you think. Let me know. Spiros on Tonopolis on Instagram asks, 
Have you considered writing a book on your journey slash career slash field? That answer depends on whether or not you would read it. Zamari96 on Instagram asked, Why is the Field Museum getting rid of Sue? Where else would I be able to find her after she leaves? Sue is not leaving the Field Museum. Sue is just moving rooms in the Field Museum. They'll still be here. You can still come and see them. We're doing a big remodel of our main hall in 2018. It's our 125th anniversary, and we got a very generous gift from a donor named Ken Griffin. And so we're going to update Stanley Field Hall and move Sue and put her like in context with all the other dinosaurs. Tilders on Instagram asks, what's the most useful degree for museum work? The answer to that question really depends on what it is that you're interested in doing. And to help answer it, I actually crowdsourced a bunch of people on Twitter who weighed in about who they are, what they're studying, and what collection they're working in. Um, they're mostly undergraduate and graduate students, but they give a really wide range of possibilities. So if you're interested in working in or studying in a museum, maybe go check that out. Our producer, Sherry Arasan, behind the camera asked me, Emily, are we excited for 2018? 2017 was a pretty good year for us here at the Brain Scoop. We got to partner with our friends at the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. We got to endeavor in some longer form, more complicated videos we'd been wanting to do for a long time. We got to live stream a dissection for the first time in five years. The channel's been around for five years now. And I got to be the keynote speaker for Chicago's March for Science, which was such an amazing experience. I'm really looking forward to what else we're gonna be doing in 2018. So thanks for sticking with us for five years, seriously. Gonna feel a little bit emotional, um, but I'm really looking forward to this year. So I hope you'll stick around with us. Happy New Year. It still has brains on it.